is a new breed of pawnbroker. You're looking at 45,000. <gasps> Fantastic. Specialising in large loans. You're looking for 1.75 million. And luxury goods. Supercars, jewellery, watches, fine wines, art, almost anything of value. If it's expensive, we want it. It's two million quid. So how much? Their asset-rich clients... Cheers. ...need to raise cash... James, please get to the point. ...fast. You're talking serious, serious money. This time... It's a lovely thing, museum standard. Mind you, we've heard that before. James hands over the reins on a car deal. If he messes up, it'll be the end. Patrick tries to get big money... It's quite a rare bag. ...from a tiny bag. A person bought one for 350000 ..and has Kristen hit the jewellery jackpot. If that's Imperial, Jade, it could go into a million. <laughs> Welcome to the world... <laughs> ..of posh porn. Hello, good afternoon. How are you? Got these two Rolexes. Are you looking to sell or loan? Pawnbroking is centuries old. Big boy, isn't it? And these days, more and more people are looking to make a quick buck from their prized belongings. Agree and find a figure for it. I can give you a loan today or tomorrow. A lot of people that come into the store want their money yesterday. I'd like to get a price to sell this bag, please. It's not always easy to get money that quick, and the pressure is really on the team. Doesn't smell of money. They have to be extra vigilant because if they make an error, then it will cost the business money. It's only three and a half carats. It's not massive. Sometimes people are desperate for the cash, and we do pride ourselves on being able to turn things around quickly for them. People can walk out of here with hundreds of thousands within an hour. That's 45k before, not even the 11 yet. Yay! It's Monday morning in Hatton Garden. Prestige and Lawrence speaking, how can I help? This is interesting. James has just received an email from a client with an interesting collection of items to sell. This uh, woman's got a load of Japanese artefacts left by her father who died. She's got art, vases, paintings, jewellery. Art and ceramics are not really my bag, but they can be worth an absolute fortune. So from experience, they are worth getting involved with. The art could be actually quite important. So, potentially, there are some bits and pieces there, actually, that could be quite good. You reckon? Don't doubt me, Josephine. Don't doubt I me. I have to, James, I have to. The owner of these items and jewellery is 47-year-old receptionist Melanie, who lives in a modern apartment in Ascot. What flavour coffee do you want? I like it not quite so strong. Mum Veronica visits regularly, and the two are very close. Not only is she my mum, but she's my best friend as well. She's the best mum anyone could ever wish for. Melanie lost her father three years ago and has many happy memories of him. He did have a really good sense of humour. Everyone thought he was funny. He laughed at himself like I think I laugh at myself. She and her sister inherited his large home in Kent. They'd now like to sell the house, but it has serious structural problems. We did have subsidence in the house, which Dad had done, and these cracks have reappeared, so we're thinking it's a subsidence again. To fix the issue, Melanie has been told that she might need to raise as much as £100,000. Oh, it's terrible, Mum. Oh, is it? Yeah, well, I'm just reading a little bit of it here. Yeah. It is difficult to quantify the cost of the works at this stage, it and is... it goes on and yeah. on. Oh, God. I know, I don't know what I'm going to do. This has been a really big worry for me, really big worry. We're so blessed that we did inherit this house, but how can we raise this extra money? Melanie and her mother have decided to sell off some of her father's oriental treasures to raise some cash for the house repairs. These are two that Dad always said never go near because they're worth a lot of money. And then this one, Mum, one that I googled, yeah. and you know the one, you know the really famous picture of the big white wave yeah. and yeah. the blue. Mm. It's by him. Mm. Her mum also has some valuable jewellery and wants Melanie to get a loan against it to help increase the fund. Oh, my God. Oh, I love it. Oh, Mum. Oh, my gosh, have you got any idea how much that's worth? It's, like... It's quite a lot. Oh, Mum. Oh, that's so kind of you. Oh, wow. So, these are my pearls. These are all Japanese pearls, Mikimoto. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, they're lovely, that's... aren't they? Yeah, and I really want to help you to get the house done as soon as possible. Yeah. And all I can say is that 
you can take these and get a loan on them. Okay. And then when you've sold the house, I get them back. Oh, Mum, thanks. Mm. So we've come to a figure of £2,000. Wow. The pawn shop deals predominantly in high-end goods. 40% of jewellery and 100% of bags brought in are designer brands. This is a Gucci bag. Everyone is looking for high-end designer brands. You know, whether you like it or not, that's what people want. But luxury labels don't always equate to large loans. Hello. Hello. Hi. I've got a Louis Vuitton handbag. Someone may bring in a high-end designer bag like a Chanel, but if the condition isn't good, um, we will not be able to move it on and sell it. It's not for my sort of market. I wouldn't okay. take this. So designer does not always mean big money. A Chanel watch, no, quite expensive. And now it's really worth <laughs> nothing. I'm shocked myself. One celebrity designer whose handbags are collectible is Philip Tracy. And at the Richmond branch, bag specialist Patrick has received a call from a client with one to sell. It's quite a rare bag. She cited the case of a person who went to a charity shop, bought one for £20 out of this particular range, and um, got two inquiries in from uh, China for upwards of 350000 for it, because it's so rare. Yeah, Philip Tracy is, is predominantly known for being a hat designer, but he does bags as well. He, does, he seems to do a collection of bags most seasons. It looks like it's never been used. There's no staining or anything. So, I mean, actually, that looks like a brand new bag to me. The bag is being sold by bride-to-be Helena, who lives with her parents near Amersham in Buckinghamshire. Her fiancé is Andy. <laughs> he won't give it back. <laughs> We met online um, and we got engaged fairly quickly. Teddy, what's this? We were speaking lots before we met up, um, so we felt like we really knew each other before we went on the date. I think it was like at first sight for me, definitely. Yeah, no, no, no. It was uh, we, well, for you, maybe. No, I'm just joking. Would you like tea, Mum? Yes, please. But life isn't easy for Helena. I have had epilepsy since I was 16 years old. I can have up to 50 simple partial seizures a day. Helena suffers a major attack at least once a week. We call an ambulance every time because of the severity of the fits. Um, you don't know where they're going to go. This means mum Geraldine always has to be by her side. It was a nasty fit last night, very nasty one, so I think... I think that the tablet's taken the edge mm. of it, but I really will feel the after-effects tomorrow. Mm. My parents have been fantastic. My mum is my full-time carer. Do you want some chocolate cake? Do you know what I won't, actually? Oh. Do you want some? You just feel absolutely torn apart. Oh. Because you just wish that there was something that could stop this from happening. Good boy. He's looking not... for more biscuits. Oh, no, he's not going to... She has to have someone with her, you know, coming down the stairs. If she goes out, she could go into the road. We have to be constantly on our guard. It's extremely distressing. Sit. Sit. Helena is looking to move forward with her life and is getting married to Andy in two weeks' time. Shall I do that with you? Yeah, OK. <laughs> I'll give you a biscuit <laughs> when you sit. So this is my wedding dress. I'm not a conventional bride, so I don't think he's expecting a conventional dress. Yes, I'm very much looking forward to the wedding. It's something that uh, we've been planning for a while. And it is a new beginning. Uh, very big, yeah. Us. Two weeks away. <laughs> I'm really excited. Uh, are you very excited? Very excited, Good. yes. <laughs> <laughs> He's great, and I'm really looking forward to our future together. But weddings don't come cheap, and Helena is keen to raise funds for their new home and a cause close to her heart. This is the bag itself. Teddy thinks it's food. <laughs> It's been sitting in my wardrobe. I thought, well, it would be nice to have the money so I can donate some of it to the Epilepsy Society. And the rest of the money will go to Andrew and I's furniture fund after we, we get married. The bag was an 18th birthday present from her mum, but Helen is now happy to put it to a different use. If I'm honest, because I've been ill for quite a long time and not been out you know, to many places, I haven't really had the occasion to use it. I would be really happy with a thousand pounds in my bag. Of course, you know, it'd be amazing to get more than that, but I would be happy with a thousand pounds. Only 10 were made of each item, so they were really limited. It's a great piece. I think most people would be happy to have something like this. But will James and his team be able to find the right buyer for this unique bag?
a siege hand garden. The new store in the heart of London's jewellery quarter has been open for just over a month. Take that, general public. And although there's been an increase in desirable one-off pieces... Very striking, isn't it? I said, come and have a look, not a touch. I'm having a look. The business also attracts clients with large collections of artefacts. Eleven. To try and work out a figure on this is going to be absolutely nuts. Which can cause problems for the team. Quite often when people turn up with these big bags full of stuff, they think that they've got a lot of money. A bag of jewellery for you. It's it's hours of fun for you. Oh, my God. There's a lot of it. But it's not always about the quantity. It's more about the quality in this game. I've not got much to do today, have I? It's like a car bit seal. Sometimes you have to just get to the good stuff. Today, receptionist Melanie is bringing her own bags of artefacts and jewellery into the Weybridge store for valuation. Hi there. Hi there, how are you? Hi, good, thank you. I better come round, didn't I? Yeah, seems... I've got quite a lot. She's hoping her items will raise some cash to fix the structural problems on the house inherited from her dad. So my dad used to go to Japan and um, get given gifts. Is that right? 200 years old? Yeah, 200 well, this years is... old. It's incredible, isn't Yeah. This? What was very exciting was, like any client, coming in with bags of things. You just don't know what they've got. This is another one I found. OK. Two of these oh, gosh. vases, which my dad was particular that we never went near, cos he always used to think they yeah, were worth money. Yeah, I know. I was just going to say, I might just need to put that down <laughs> straight away. Yeah. So you got a pair of those? A pair of those. And there's lots of ceramics and china and paintings. And then suddenly the jewellery came out, and I was back in the room. Um, I've got some Mickey Moto pearls, which <laughs> <Brilliant>. came... <laughs> the... Well, that's really gorgeous, that. Mickey Moto is a very highly regarded sort of pearl supplier. Um, oh, wow, that is gorgeous. This one we don't want to sell. Maybe just get a, um, a loan. Oh, a loan, that OK, one. that's yeah, fine. My yeah. mum wants it back. Now, that is a gorgeous three stone. Really good sized stones as well. What sort of figures are you hoping to sort of generate, you know? Well, as much as possible, really. That's what everyone um, says. Yeah, I know. <laughs> well, you know. we'll do our very best on getting the right figures, but... Yeah, don't, I'm not expecting £100,000. Well, you never you know. know. You never know. <laughs> All right, thanks so much for seeing me. All right, then. Thank you very much. Right. Take care. See you again. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. JMO now has his work cut out, valuing such a large collection. Hello. I'd like to pawn some coins today. Although most clients are looking for loans, to pawn or to... I was pawning, I would like it back. Sales are a growing part of James's business. We'd be looking off for about £150. We find a lot of buyers for items that come in. So is it a loan or selling? Selling. selling. selling? We'll take a cut of the sale um, proceeds, so it's, it's a win-win situation. But selling can have its disadvantages. Are you, you're not sure about it? You are um, sometimes let down by buyers. You know, they don't turn up, don't transfer money. If the funds don't go in this afternoon, we need to cancel it. And suddenly their phones are uh, uh -huh. off and uh, go unanswered, so uh, that is one of the pitfalls uh, in trading in that way, but generally it works for us really, really well. It's Tuesday afternoon and another sales inquiry has come into the Hatton Garden store. Guy's got a 1930s Plymouth American thing. Oh, let's have a look. It's beautiful, look at that. James has received an email from someone who wants to sell a classic car. Oh, my God. Do you like that? That's so lovely. What does this guy want to do, sell it or loan against it? He's looking to um, sell it, so he's given us some figures. So hopefully we can get it away for him. My background is classic cars, and when the Plymouth come in as an inquiry, I was jumping for joy. This was an absolutely beautiful car. It's a lovely thing, museum standard, he says, so, uh, mind you, we've heard that before, No, I know, but it does look good. It does look, it does like look in a lovely nick. Condition. So, and it's a very rare 1930s Plymouth. It's like there can't be many of them left, probably a handful in the world. And um, we're going to uh, try and help with the sale. The owner of the Plymouth is businessman and classic car collector Colin, who lives with his family in Bristol. A bit of a clean, getting ready for our next little outing. I've always been into cars, I've always liked classics. Yeah, I've got five cars all together. I love restoring them and polishing them. They're just an uh, enjoyable hobby. That's <sighs> quite right. Yeah. But Colin's classic cars aren't the most important things in his life. You're standing up. Both Colin's children were born with a rare condition called Opitz-Trigonocephaly syndrome and need round-the-clock care. 
Tickle, 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 tickle. Where are you going? <laughs> Luke never relaxes, never rests. He's like this all the time. Angel's quite content. If you left her there, she'd lay there all day quite happily. Both very happy kids, very content. We never know what's going to happen from one day to another with them. We do try to get some respite. If they go to a respite hospice, then we have a few days to ourselves to do what we want, to go away. But um, I miss them so much when I'm not with them and it, it's hard to leave them. By having the cars, and that obviously keeps my mind off of the, the other problems. I try to be a family man. I, I do my best. It's just a, a full-on 24-7 job. But the family are keen to live as normal a life as possible. Come on, you lot, keep up. Did you bring her carrots, Cop? Yeah. What have we got? They enjoy coming out and seeing what she's up to, running around. Back up, come on. Come on, man, quick. What we would love to do is actually take the children to uh, Disneyland in Florida. But if we go, we'd have to go on uh, Virgin Atlantic, where they've got beds in the upper class, which one way is somewhat like four and a half thousand pounds, which is very expensive. But that would be the only way that we could actually take the children there. Colin has decided to raise the money for the holiday by selling the Plymouth, which he's owned for two years. It's a 1931 free window Plymouth Coupe, a uh, free speed manual gearbox. It's a beautiful car. It's got all its uh, bits and bobs in the boot. It's got uh, its original picnic table and chairs. Oh, I just got a bit of dust off that I missed. The minimum I'd let it go for is 20,000. I won't let it go for less. I'd like to keep it, but unfortunately, you've got to sell it. Pawn shop front desk is the first port of call for many customers. In Richmond, gemologist Kristen is on duty. I've got some jewellery I would like to yeah. get valued, please. Quite no, sell. We'll have a look for you. I'll give you two fifty for the dog. Oh no, he's not going anywhere. No, he's <laughs> joking. He's lovely. Oh. What is it? Oh. Is it Jed? Yes. Yes, it is. Have you ever had it tested it's anywhere? Been t I know it's been tested because one of the corners is a little bit of chip marker where they took a piece off. But you don't have any no, I've got no. Well, they don't did paperwork years ago. Right, so I know it's quite of. old then? Yes. And how did you come by it? Well, it came from an Arab prince when my mum's friend lent her mansion out so he gave the necklace to her. As instead of it? Yes, wow. and she didn't want it, she didn't need it, so she gave it to me when I was 14. Yeah. It could be worth a lot more than the rent. If that's imperial, gee, it's in the high, high thousands. It's basically more than diamonds, one of the most rarest gemstones. I was really excited because I'd never seen anything that colour of jade in my hand. Only in a museum I've seen it. And I was like, wow, I've got a piece of jade. Everybody look, <laughs> look at what I've got. It's going to take me some time to test it and to see how much we can get. Yeah, and I'll come back to you with the best price. Hopefully I'll have some really good news. OK, thank you. Thanks a lot for right, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. The feel of it to me and the look of it, I'm thinking it is, I'm hoping it is. And if it is with that colour, it's worth a lot of money. Oh, I don't really want to leave it, I'm going to take it home. <laughs> I really don't know how much it's worth and I would like to find out. To get this colour in Jade, if it's authentic and it hasn't been touched and it's naturally that colour, it is very rare. Uh, there's not many places that mine it. Um, there's some in Russia. The best quality colour comes from Burma, and it's Imperial Jade. And if it's Imperial Jade, the money can go crazy. James enjoys being in charge. Well, just sort of next to me with a sandwich ball with an arrow just pointing at me. And there's being your sidekick, and there's taking the absolute piss. He's keen to handle every deal they do. Just tell him that it can't be done in the time frame. That's all I can do with it, unfortunately. James will be the first to admit that he's a control freak, so delegating and letting go of things that he normally would handle has proved difficult for him. But now he's spread thinly between three stores, this is impossible. You've got to let go of these, some of these. I just don't want to let the client down. Hopefully she'll be all right. She's only going there to get his opinion. I know I've got to start delegating. There's no doubt about it. I'm overworked. He's had an idea that would help him monitor what's happening. 
there are a few members of staff that sometimes get a little bit lazy. They're on Facebook and they get a little magazine out. Just when you're doing something wrong is when James walks in. Right. We're going to get CCTV set up to monitor the other stalls. You can phone them up and actually say, do you mind putting that coffee cup on a coaster? See you later, yeah. Don't talk to anyone and don't touch anything expensive. But for the time being, James will still have to visit each branch in person. Today, it's Weybridge. Hi, hi, James, you all right? How is everything? All right, yeah, all right, James. Yeah, it's been good. mad here. Is it? You got that email, didn't you? Email? Yeah, about the Plymouth Classic. Yes, I did, actually. We, we need, need to talk about that. We'll have a, a lot of research on that for you. When I first heard about the classic car, I really had to get involved. I really wanted to tell James I wanted to look after it. Well, you know, it's just one of those ones I've been working on. We both love our cars, right? I really want to get my teeth into this one. You want to get your teeth into it? Yeah, well, I know it's going to be a bit, bit, bit hard on the heart, but... Well, tell me about your experience with cars, Jamie. You know, I go to Le Mans every year. I get my hair cut every eight weeks. It don't mean to say I'm Vidal Sassoon. <laughs> I don't really want to pass this over, Jamie. I need your guidance. You know, I'm not just saying I can do it on my own. He was chomping at the bit to get involved, and I was a little bit apprehensive. Really, that one was my baby. He says it's a museum standard. I mean, if that is the case, then it's going to be spot on. Yeah, it'll be a good test for you. I want you to get mm. it down to the yeah. storage yeah. facility. Yeah. Let's have a look at it and let's try and bring some bias to the table. Yeah. When it's down there, I want yeah, to come yeah. down and have a look. Of course. And I'm if not... we're not too busy, yeah. you can come down there with me and I might even let you have sit in the driver's seat and make a brum brum noise. Thanks, Jay. I really All appreciate right, that. Nice one. This could be a good test for Jamo, to be honest. And uh, now, obviously, if he messes up, it'll be the end. He won't get another car from me. If he can bring someone to the table, I'll be doing a Michael Flatley all the way to the bank. Yeah, yeah, it's just a diamond ring. It's afternoon at the Richmond store, and bride-to-be Helena is bringing her Philip Tracy bag in to be valued. Hello. Oh, hello. Um, it's Helena. We spoke earlier. What have you got there, then? I have got um, a Philip Tracy bag. Let's have a look what you've got. OK, so I've got the bag in it. All right, I've heard all about this. Wow. Oh, it's pretty small, isn't it? Yeah. I was expecting something bigger. It actually does fit all your essentials. Does it? Yes. Yeah, lipstick and a credit card in there, yeah. can you? <laughs> I thought the size of it being so small might prohibit the value of it a little bit. Yes. That's all you need. I like the way it sort of incorporates art and fashion. Having said that, the sort of uniqueness of it as well, I actually quite like the bag. I thought it was actually quite interesting. Have you used it much, then? I haven't used it once. I've taken it out and admired it and then yeah. put it away again. It's actually more interesting than I thought it'd be. Do you want to sell this to you? I would like a thousand pounds for it. The money that I will hopefully get for it, some of it will go to the Epilepsy Society. Oh, wow, um, okay. The rest will go to our furniture fund. I'm just about to get married in a few weeks' time. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Don't you want this down the aisle? <laughs> <laughs> when clients come in with stories like this, it really does affect me and it puts pressure on me to come up with something else. She had such a good story and she had very, very genuine reasons for needing the money and I wanted to do the best I could for her. Supposedly, these are quite collectible. Some of them have gone for huge amounts of money, yeah. uh, or one went for a huge amount of money. Whether that's true or not, I don't know. I'll be in contact in the next few days, but I'm going to talk to a few dealers and we'll just see what we can get for it. Excellent, so, that's, that's really great. And that's you? a really good cause as well, so I'll, I'll do my best. Yes, Thanks for coming in. See Thank you. you. Bye. Take Bye. care. Bye. Thanks. Bye. I'm hopeful uh, that I will get the results that I want, um, but it's, you know, just a matter of waiting and seeing, really. I'll keep my fingers crossed. When it comes to selling items... Good morning, Prestige. ..James and the team have to be masters in the art of negotiation. What about 85? How do you feel with that? Uh, 85. There's no movement at all to 90. They're looking for both. They'd offer you 1,750. They need to get the best deal for both their clients and the business. The offer, James, me a very good offer. Good, I'm good. In the Richmond branch, it's Patrick's turn to negotiate on Helena's Philip Tracy bag. I've got a buyer coming down shortly to look at this uh, Philip Tracy bag. I mean, I'm going to try and get as much money as I can for the item, you know, within reason. I can't give, you know, can't get it over market value if it's not worth the money it's worth. But I think she'll pay good money for it. 
Patrick has called in Nicola, who is a buyer and seller of handbags. Hi, Nicola, how are you? I'm good, how are you right. doing? I'm very well, come round. My tactic was going to be with Nicola is to drive the price up so I could get as much for Helena as possible. This is a little interesting one from the 2003 collection of Philip Tracy. <gasps> so cute, it's a lovely little bag. We've got a little mirror in there as well, a matching mirror. How unusual is that? Yeah, wasn't many of them made. Um, I think it's quite collectible. It's really nice. Hmm. Okay, so what do you think? I'm interested, yeah. I'm looking around about £1,300. Where do you think? What do you think? See, I can't get anywhere near that. Really? Where, yeah. where do you think it'd be? See, I was thinking two, around the 200 mark. I know. I mean, it is quite collectible. I really need to be up that sort of... Can't you get yeah. a bit more? The problem with this bag is, is because it's so unique, you can't put a price on it. And that's the problem she was having, and that's the problem I was having. Thanks, anyway, for coming right. in. Cheers, darling. See I'll you be later. in touch. I'll give you a call later on. Yeah. With little interest from Nicola, Patrick will have to start again looking for a new buyer. <laughs> In Weybridge, shop manager Jamo is also looking to get as much money as possible for client Melanie. Adam. Ah, Jamo. How you doing? Yeah. He's called on expert auctioneer Adam to help him appraise her Oriental treasures and jewellery. Got the so goodies well. in the inner sanctum here. Okay. It? Now this is it. We've got some items here that were given as like gifts to her father, who used to be a trader in Japan. With Melanie's items, the jewellery side of it was very easy for us to appraise, but with the artifacts, it was a different matter. Shall we start with these sort of onion-shaped vases? These are Japanese, known as Kutani ware. The orange and the gilt is a typical colour. Early 20th century Japan, hand-painted. Have a look at the decoration on yeah. kind of slapped on. Yeah. A bit irregular. Yeah. These were made in mass quantities yeah. as a souvenir. Any now, one? these are spurious marks. These oh, are just okay. to show that, oh, they've got a mark on the bottom, yeah. but they're, mm. they're, they're not really anything okay. relevant at all. That's what they're meant to do, fool people like you. Yeah. Well, th this one's right. got an even bigger mark. This is a much more modern piece, Japanese studio pottery. This is a mark we'd have to look into this. Uh, it looks something quite interesting. Sometimes you just need to sift through and find those few bits that are quite valuable. This is definitely the most interesting thing you've shown me so far. Right, we're on um, the winner. Looking at this collectively, the ladies looking to sell could be a little bit of a struggle, couldn't and it? I think it's important to be quite realistic with your hairs. With the Japanese items attracting a disappointing value, Jamo's pinning his hopes on the jewellery that Melanie also brought in. With regards to the pearls, um, they're very good quality. They're made by a supplier known as Mickey Moto. They're highly regarded in the industry. Jewellery um, is a very high standard. So the pearls are, are fantastic quality, but the diamond ring, you, you've got a, a extremely well-balanced quality of stones. They're commercially recognised in regards to round brilliant cuts. They're fantastic colour and very good clarity. Um, and really, it's the showstopper. Uh, value of the item is in very high numbers. Uh, I knew straight away when um, Melanie said that she had some jewellery eyes back in the safe zone. She doesn't want to sell these. That these are items that she wants to loan against. Melanie's jewellery is her most substantial asset, but will its value be enough to cover the major repairs to her dad's house? <laughs> Pawnbrokers are often presented with counterfeit items. If it's a fake, it won't be a Swiss made movement. Mm. Probably about 30% of the items we see turn out not to be genuine. Who in their right mind would fake that? So research and expertise is vital. She's in for a surprise. Although a lot of the people we see are trying to pull a fast one, there are some genuine customers that don't actually know that their items are fakes. These aren't for us, they're not. They were a gift, cheapskate, huh? In Richmond, Kristen is excited about the potential value of the jade pendant. Client Anne has owned it for years and wants to find out if it's genuine. I couldn't really wait to get to work that day and just get started testing it. I couldn't really sleep. <laughs> if it was Imperial Jade, that, that colour could be 300,000, something like that. <laughs> so I've had a look at the outside of the stone just because a lot of it in gemology is just by your eyes looking for characteristics and I've observed there is some chips in it, so that fills me with a bit of doubt because it means it's quite soft material, um, and geod's hard, and it, it doesn't chip easily. I was just thinking, no, there's something not quite right, So, but I'm really going to have to take my time, do every test to make sure. 
The most conclusive way to test for jade is to use state-of-the-art equipment in the shape of a refractometer. This measures how light passes through the gemstone. So if this is geared, um, it's going to be around 1.66, 1.62 on the scale. So here's for hoping. <laughs> and it's not. It's got a reading of 1.54. I know one thing, it's not geared. <laughs> <clears throat> That's disappointing. It wasn't even a natural gemstone. It was man-made, uh, a man-made material, and it was more of a plastic. So to us, it's not worth anything. In Cambridge, Anne and her partner are nervously awaiting a call from Kristen. And as soon as she mentioned worth more than diamonds, that was it. I thought, hello. See you in the sun, bask in the sun. What do you reckon? Mm. Yeah. I want to see how much it is, what its value, if anything it's valued at, and find out if it's really what I think I've been told it is. And now I'm going to call Anne. My gut feeling is she's going to be shocked. I'm sure she'll be disappointed. Who wouldn't be? Hello. Hello, is that Anne? Yes, hello, how are you? Hello, Anne, it's Kristen. How are you doing? I'm all right, and you? I'm good. I know you've been eagerly waiting for my call, I'm sure. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um... So, you know I had to test it and everything, and yeah. um, I've done all my gemolecule tests, and um, unfortunately I've got some bad news for you. OK. It's not testing up as geared. Right. I'm really sorry about that, cos you were nearly sure it was geared, weren't you? Mm, so yes. I'm actually disappointed to tell you that. I am sorry. That's um, OK. And I wish it was better news I was ringing you with. Um, That's right, But no it, at least you know now. But uh, thanks for bringing it in anyway. You have a nice day anyway, Thank yeah. Thanks a lot. OK, bye. bye. It's not Jade. Oh, well, never mind. A few things happen. It's worse things that happen, let's see. Mm. No worries. No worries, no problem. End of story. She actually took that quite well. <laughs> She was just like, OK, that's OK. No, but she seems like a nice person, and maybe, yeah, I'm sure she is disappointed, really. It's the start of a new week at the London branch. Oh, hello, Prestige. Olga speaking. How can I help? All right, well, you let us know, cos we're trying to get this done, sorted out. I want to get this battered away. And James is trying his best to delegate. You'll find me back. Cheers. Thank you. Bye. James, what's happening with the 1930s Plymouth? Well, I've actually given that uh, to Jamo. Oh my God, so you're passing a car over. I know, it was a big deal for me, but it is a test for him. If you see what he, how he performs on it, he could potentially earn us a few quid out of this one. Yeah. But if he messes up, be the last one he gets. Oh, well, I hope he does well on it. James won't completely let go and he'll be watching J-Mo like a hawk. And I just hope that doesn't put J-Mo under too much pressure. It was quite daunting and quite full-on looking after this particular inquiry because it's not the sort of everyday car that you would experience. Quite nervous about this because obviously James is going to be uh, keeping a very close eye on this particular inquiry, so I've got to cover all angles. J-Mo has arranged to meet an expert at the garage where the car is being stored. Oh, my gosh, wow. It's his first chance to take a proper look at the vintage classic. Oh, this is it. <laughs> Jeez, this is mint. When seeing the Plymouth in the flesh, it was absolutely fantastic. The car is in ex exceptional condition. I mean, the client said that it was of museum standards, and, I mean, it is absolutely clean. Everything about it, even the lines of the paintwork, the sort of pinstripes of the outline of the car. But Jamo is unaware boss James is planning to pay a surprise visit to scrutinise the deal. Well, this is the first time I've actually handed over um, a car to someone else, and this has gone to Jamo, and I'm feeling a little bit anxious about it, to be honest. Just going to listen in and make sure he's actually asking the right questions and getting all the answers he needs to um, pass this on. Hi, James. How are you doing, Jamo? Just thought I'd pop in. I was just passing. James are right. Oh, no, what's going on now? I won't interrupt you. Broke you. Oh, 
J-Mo looked like he was going to have a heart attack when I turned up the storage facility. I was just there to keep a little eye on him, but I think nerves had kicked in. I thought you were in London. I was, but I was just passing. I thought I'd pop in and see how you were getting on. Yeah, Where's I'm... the expert? He's on his way. You do know what this is, don't you? Oh, I noticed that, yeah. It's, it's, it's bird, bird shit. It's bird shit, yeah. You know that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you want to jump in? I've got the keys. What are you sniffing me for? Just having a sniff. Get in the other side. Oh, right, oh, I'll tell you what, these seats are nice, aren't they? This is lovely, isn't it, in here? It's a beautiful car, but I can't... I've got to look away from the beauty of it. Forget I've, that. Don't I've got to look away. after the client. I've got to look after your business. Oh, I love it. It's pretty smart, isn't it? It's lovely. <laughs> oh, dear. Robert is a classic car expert who j called in for his opinion on the Plymouth. Just remember, j mm. the sound of a door... is very important. ..tells you so much more. OK. It's the old saying. Solid. I'll leave you to it, yeah? Oh. Robert? Yeah, hi. Hi. Robert, yeah. Yeah, good. Yeah. Wow. Well, thanks for coming down. That's brilliant. So what do you think? This is... Um, can I commit when I see the back of it? It's very <laughs> important. This is testing for me, there's no doubt about that. My nerves are on edge. I've bitten my fingers down to the bone. It's what was termed as a business coupe. You might say a cross between a commercial vehicle and an ordinary car. OK. What might made this quite special to the client in the 30s? When the Plymouth came out, it was a more upmarket version. There were two uh, main features. One was it had hydraulic brakes. OK. And the other thing, it had what they marketed as floating power. James was looking over my shoulder. I could see his eyes burning on the back of my head, making sure I had everything covered. So obviously, classic cars are extremely popular. People are investing a lot of money. It is more likely to appeal to a collector. Yeah. He seems to be asking the right questions, to be fair to him. Bless his car socks. This is a test for me, as much as it is a test for Jamie. It's time to, like, let... Let it... Hi, guys. Oh, yeah. Sorry Hi. to interrupt. Oh, nice How are you doing? <laughs> well, basically, from my point of view, are we going to be able to move this thing on? It's a quirky car. It's pretty. It has it look, its looks in its favour. If somebody sees it and likes it, they'll break your arm for it. It's lovely. They, they're never going to find a better one, I wouldn't imagine. All right, well, I'll leave you guys to it. Good luck, Thanks. yeah? Yeah, lovely. Thanks. I think me turning up and being there in the background definitely put him under a little bit of pressure, but hopefully he relaxed, and I think he got to the bottom of the appraisal process. But thanks very much for coming. Very down. interesting really vehicle, appreciate it. and it's in beautiful condition, Brilliant. and I'm sure you'll do very well with it's, it. OK, okay cheers. Take care. It's going to be a toughie to sell, but luckily I've now got some useful selling tools, and I've got a couple of clients. James has got a couple of clients. Now it's to see who's going to sell it first. <laughs> It's the end of another busy month at the pawn shop. How can I help you? I just wanted to pop these in just to get a appraisal. OK, brilliant. Cho, can you make a chap of coffee? <laughs> and spirits are running high. The people of Hampshire sent out a note <laughs> saying they're worrying about their missing idiot. I said, don't worry, he's alive and working in Waverley. <laughs> we do try and hire people with a sense of humour. It's definitely needed in this job. Is it all right if I use the company card to set up an account at a haberdashery? Yeah. What are you talking about? <laughs> you don't seem to have enough buttons on your shirts lately. What are you I can't help if I'm bursting out. It's all that... Bursting that was... out? You think you're in a blooming nightclub, you're at your desk. Oh, yeah. Evening in Ascot, and receptionist Melanie is waiting to hear about the value of her oriental artefacts and jewellery. Holly, do you want a drink? Yeah, I'd love one. Yeah. Wine? <laughs> oh, yeah. She's invited a friend round for moral support. I'm just nervous that it's going to be worth nothing at all, really. My dad's house has got um, subsidence. It's actually £100,000 for the repairs, so anything towards that would be good. The Japanese stuff, um, I don't know at all how much that is worth. It could be worth £50 or it could be worth £5,000. Fingers crossed it's the £5,000. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. In Weybridge, JMO is ready to make Melanie the combined loan and sale offer. Melanie's a lovely lady with lots of really nice and unusual items. And some of the items have actually been quite tricky to value. We've got to be careful what we potentially buy or loan against. We don't want to get caught out. Hello? Oh, 
Hi, Mel. It's Jamie from Prestige. How are you? Hi, Jamie. I'm good, thank you. How are you? Yeah, good, thanks. I was just going to touch base. You know, obviously there was a particular figure you had in mind with regards to to the items, because um, you got a few problems or issues with your house, haven't you? We just need to raise as much money as we possibly can towards um, my dad's house. Oh gosh, right, yeah. It's extremely fascinating. It's looking into your items. We had to get a, a, a second opinion, and um, we, we called in an expert of the Far Eastern items. Um, but it turns out it's actually quite tricky to pinpoint a value on them. You know, overall, I think you could find those items sort of fetching a good sort of couple of thousand pounds. Oh, really? But if we go to um, the jewellery, um, the pearls, you know, we would be looking just over a thousand. Right. The main aspect of it all is the diamond three stone. Of everything. I think, you know, if you put everything together, you're looking at a good £20,000. Oh, wow. You know, as a package, you know, we're happy to offer that to you. Oh, well, that, that's a help. Oh, oh thank you. Is that, is that, yeah, good news. <laughs> yeah. Thanks very much. Okay, that's super. Thanks so much. Okay, bye thank bye. You. Bye. 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 Collectively, yeah. everything together, yeah. £20,000. <gasps> Yeah. Well, oh, that's good, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Really good. Melanie's offer is made up of a £2,000 sale of the Japanese items and an £18,000 loan on the jewellery, with 80% of the value in the diamond ring. It is a really good outcome. It's certainly enough to get things started anyway. Yeah, it's brilliant news. I couldn't be happier. Really good. Melanie was very pleased with that. If she came in with just the china, I think we would really be um, offering bad news. I think she knew that the jewellery was going to be her saviour, but she's extremely happy. In Richmond, Patrick has news about Helena's bag. To make life easier for her, he's going to pay a home visit. It's probably not what she was expecting, but um, hopefully she'll be satisfied anyway. I'm feeling really nervous. I just don't want to be disappointed. I'm really, really unsure of what's going to be the result, really. Hi, Helena, how are you? Are you well? Hello. Nice to see you. Hello. 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 Would you like to come through? Yeah. Come on. You all right, Teddy? It's all right. Hello. Hello. <laughs> so, here we are. <laughs> yes, here we are. Are you nervous? Don't be nervous. I'm really nervous. No, don't be. Um, I did a lot of research. I still haven't actually managed to find that particular bag. I saw one that's actually similar to it. Um, wasn't big money. No. Um, everyone has seen it, has loved the bag. They think it's a really nice bag. And because it is, you know, it's the only one I've seen, I can't compare it to anything, so it's hard to value it. Um, we had a couple of bids that were quite low. So what we're going to do is basically call on the trade, take a punt on it. And James and I have discussed it and thought, despite ourselves. So we're, I'm going to make you an offer for it. Okay. Um, if we can get more, then we'll give you more as and when we get there. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do is basically bid you 600 for it as it is. Okay. Uh, is that acceptable to you? That sounds... What do you think that sounds? Up to you. It's your bag. Thank you oh, very thank much. Thank you. I'm going to take it. Thank you right. very much. All right. Thank Happy you with that? Yes. Yes. Brilliant. Yes. Great. Thank you. Right. Off to you. I have to say that went really, really well. I was actually a little bit apprehensive that she wouldn't be happy with the offer. James has decided to take a punt on this. It was a great cause. You know, she wants to give some to the Epileptic Society. She wants a bit for her furniture fund. You know, she's a lovely, lovely lady. And we just think it's the right thing to do. It's morning in Weybridge, and Jamo has found a possible buyer for the Plymouth car and wants to update James on the deal. Hi, James. Jamo. Jamo, hi. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm good. I just thought I'd touch base with regards to the client and the Plymouth. Yeah. Right. Nice chap, David. This is your um, potential buyer, is it? Yeah, he's the potential buyer that I've nurtured. He is very keen. So he hasn't come, come back with a bid then, has he? He is going to come back to me today with a figure. Well, I mean, I've got someone who's uh, put a firm bid forward and we've got some numbers. Wait till you get the number from your potential okay. buyer. Yeah. And then prior then you can go back and give uh, the client his fee so i'll be in touch yeah all right mate my way to give you cheers thanks mate. you can't leave it can you what do you mean can't leave it i've got someone with a offer why do you want to try and beat your own member of staff it's not a contest joe <laughs> good god <laughs> But the end of the day arrives, and Jamo's been unable to confirm a deal for the Plymouth. 
when my one pulled the plug, I was panicking. But fortunately, James had a buyer as well, and we were able to look after the client, and everything was good. And with James's buyer secured, Jamo's ready to break the news to Colin. Plymouth, what a beautiful car. I mean, it's absolutely stunning. He's a cracking guy, Colin. And, um, you know, it's really been something I've been able to get my teeth into. I'm a bit excited to see what they actually reveal price-wise. If we sell the car, it'd be absolutely fantastic that we can go on holiday to America, Disneyland. Um, it's just a trip of a lifetime, really. It... Hello. Oh, hi, Colin. It's Jamo Prestige. Hello, Jamo. How are you? All right? Yeah, very well. Oh, how's things? You good? Yeah. Not too bad. Yeah. I do have some um, positive news. Yeah. Um, We've had a, a, a potential offer on the table. And um, we're happy to advise you. Uh, that we can give you a figure of £20,000. Oh, brilliant. That's fantastic news. Absolutely brilliant. Ah, oh, good. Good man. Thank you so much, Colin. Yeah, no, take care. And you. Bye-bye. Mm, that's good news. <laughs> Bang! Laura? Yeah? They managed to get the 20000 for it. It was after. Brilliant. That's good news, isn't it? That is. Yeah, brilliant. Disneyland. <laughs> <laughs> We've had a figure on the table. The figure's been accepted. Everyone's happy, so uh, good news to report to James tomorrow. This doesn't happen very often. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>